Hey, this is Hotzer, and we're on Hotspot. Hotspot is one of those maps that has seen a ton of changes. It used to have five bases for domination. It used to have cross spawns. It used to have a completely different island setup in most of the map. The center of the map was really congested with islands except for where B is today. The exact location of A was basically a torpedo alley with a much tighter, much more narrower island design and if you were a destroyer you were asking to die if you went in that area without any scouting whatsoever it was it was an interesting map but it's much more fun and much more balanced now and i'm really thankful that wargaming made all of those changes the cross spawn was probably the most frustrating you would basically decide to attack one spawn and completely wipe out the six people that spawn there it was it was not fun and now it's just it's just a much better map but what do I do in the map? Well, we're on domination in the rune, and it's a cruiser, so let's start with the cruisers. So, the initial cruiser spawn, I like to try and support the destroyers as they capture A and C, or attempt to capture A and C. Usually A is beyond impossible to take, it's really risky, you're out in the open, there's a bunch of islands in the way, and it's not easy to break out. It's just not a position I would aggressively push, especially as a cruiser. You just want to try and take advantage of killing an enemy that might go into A. And be careful from that battleship crossfire because they can reach out and touch you. You don't want to be too broadside around A. I usually go for B with great detectability. This is very easy to accomplish. Most of the time, the enemy is underestimating it. For whatever reason, destroyers love to go around C and... Uh, granted, C is a great place to go, but you don't need what looks like three destroyers in this example to head for C. You're just leaving B wide open to an enemy cruiser, and if you can have a cruiser take B, you need to call in the Powerball, you need to get all of that money, because you should not have the opportunity to capture B with a cruiser. That is a mistake by the enemy, but if it's open, you need to take it. And C, it's very congested, there are a lot of islands, but it is reasonable for a cruiser to head in there to take out the destroyer. Don't ever go in as a battleship, especially at the start of the match. Now, a aircraft carrier is not in this game. It's a pretty even game of four battleships per side. The enemy has four cruisers and four destroyers. We have six cruisers and two destroyers. One's dead now, but as an aircraft carrier, how do I play Domination? I like to try and locate one of those destroyers at A or C. I also like to prevent B from being captured. B is wide open. It should be pretty easy to get an angle to at least attempt a shot. And I've seen players go through the fringes, the west and the east. Nine times out of ten, I'll run into a destroyer that's trying to run the border. You take them out, you protect yourself because that's where they're going. They're going straight for you. There's not a lot of protection. They've removed a lot of islands on this map. So you need to be careful as an aircraft carrier. You need to recognize which flank is being successful and sort of push next to that flank. So you're not overrun by those sneaky destroyers that love to just come and take you out. Battleships are an interesting class on this map because... They can't really go safely into A, safely into C, safely into B. They have to rely on their teammates, so you should, and this doesn't happen all the time, you should put yourself in a position to take out the cruisers, take out the battleships that try and push the fringe areas of the map. A lot of times I see battleships stay really, really, really far back. I prefer to use those islands that are sort of north of A and north of C to my advantage to break line of sight. That doesn't mean you have to be right next to those islands, but if you keep them in a position to sort of block off most of the attacking force and only have sight on one or two ships, you can really help your team survive the push and then push right back. So destroyers, well destroyers, you go capture and I basically drew the exact path that I try to take when I'm capturing bases from the north. It's similar from the south. You want to sort of go in, especially for C, you want to go in and give yourself a way out. It's okay that the enemy's there. They're going to be contesting it, but make sure you give yourself a way out. 
Because sea is so congested with islands, it's really easy to run aground and pull a knot, sir. So just be careful. Same with A. A is so dangerous to go into. If you feel like you cannot succeed, bail on it. There's no reason to waste your ship that early. Just give yourself a way out. And B, usually nobody goes for B. So it's pretty safe as well to take from a destroyer's point of view. Sometimes it can set you up to have a flanking fire on an enemy destroyer that's being overly aggressive to try and capture A or C, and you take them out and you go and capture the base that they just captured. There are so many ways you can hide from the enemy. The islands are just endless, so just use that to your advantage. Slip in and slip out, use the smoke. This is a destroyer's map. A good destroyer captain can run circles around pretty much everyone. There's just enough room for your torpedoes to be effective, and there's just enough islands that you can ambush pretty much any part of the map. So these are key points on the map. I feel like, especially in the east, both teams feel like they have great protection until they don't. You don't want to blindly go past that 50% line outside of the protection of those islands and engage the enemy without a destroyer to protect you with intel and possibly torpedoes to make the enemy team maneuver. If you have a destroyer advantage, a torpedo advantage, it's a good bet that the enemy is going to try and avoid those torpedoes. And how do they avoid those torpedoes? They're going to show their side at some point and you need to be in position to exploit that huge mistake. But you don't want to go into that area unless, of course, you have a destroyer or an aircraft carrier scouting for your team. It's very, very dangerous. You can die very quickly. On the western side of the map, it's pretty much the same idea. There are islands that are great for protecting your ship. You can use those to limit the number of enemies who can attack you. There is a midpoint that you can decide, okay, we're too committed or we're not committed enough and try and engage the enemy. Generally, the eastern side of the map becomes a little bit more bogged down. The west is tending to play with an aggressor and a defensive player. That's usually what happens on the western side of the map. You have a team that wants to push past the midpoint. You have another team that wants to be very defensive and allow that team to push past the midpoint. Once you've knocked them all out, then you can capture A freely. There is a little bit of overlooking between A and B. So if you're a battleship looking for a position on the map that will give your team the most consistent support, that area in between A and B is a really good strategy, in my opinion. You can also do the same between B and C, but it's not quite as protected. All right, well, Standard is a different map. It basically should be a different map. It completely changes the way you play this map. The most important thing that I see a lot of times is the weak spawn, whatever spawn is away from their base, tends to try and meet up with their team. That's pretty universal. And anytime I've seen any other strategy, say the weak spawn is going to push the enemy base, it doesn't go that well. You're not going to have more players than the enemy. It's inherently that one or two stragglers will decide, oh, I just want to meet up with my base. And then they have a ship advantage. And you don't want to assault a ship advantage. That puts you in a really, really bad position. So you shouldn't do that. So a cruiser, well, cruisers are inherently aggressive and I like to go both the east and the west side of whatever island chain is close. Push the enemy down, take out destroyers, take out cruisers, take out battleships as a team and you will find it's pretty successful. The strong side definitely has an advantage. You just have to have a good defensive posture to counter it and I don't really talk about the defensive aspects but generally you want to make sure that you're moving with an angle away from the enemy that's pursuing you. You want to try and get as much damage on the enemy as you can. And once they pass that point of no return, you need to take them out. And usually it's one by one on this map because the way the islands, they kind of block off the line of sight. So multiple enemies can't engage you that effectively. And my drawing basically highlighting the fact that you can push the eastern side, the far east from the south spawn. You can also bring the weak spawn and push up the western side of what would be the sea base on domination. 
You need to be careful when you do this because usually there are enemies waiting for you. So you don't want to over pursue. You don't want to push too fast, but it's a good attack path to catch any stragglers that are taking a while to reach their main base because it just is the strategy that's used on standard. A significant portion of the weak spawn will meet up with their base. You can get broadside shots on them. So the aircraft carrier, I would say very adamantly, you wanna get over to your base quickly, very quickly, because it's just gonna be the fact that you're gonna get pushed really, really, really hard. Now, you could go any part of the map, but I will give you a couple secrets. If you can push your aircraft along the primary pushing flank, you will probably have an advantage. The enemy team will be defensive pulling away they can't afford to change their angle that much or they're gonna take huge broadsides. This is where you strike. You put your torpedoes, you put your dive bombers, you make them show their side to your team that's pushing aggressively. You wanna avoid those cruisers, but if you find a destroyer that's off trying to do some sneaky, sneaky tactic, you take him out. And most likely he'll be trying to run against an island. He thinks that's protecting him, but in fact, that's the worst position you could be in if an aircraft carrier is going after you. Now, one thing that an aircraft carrier will have to do on standard, there's gonna be a strong push from the enemy, most likely, and it's gonna be on the weak side of your base. So there's not gonna be a good defensive force that will protect your backside. And usually the aircraft carrier is one of the slowest ships to get out of the area. If you happen to spawn on the weak side, you need to protect yourself. Yes, it would be great if battleships, cruisers, and destroyers would protect yourself, but if you cannot fight off a destroyer that's coming after you solo, then you need to work on it because aircraft carriers will be called into protecting themselves a lot on this map in standard. Battleships are basically cruisers. They're just trying to push the flank and you wanna provide the tankiness to that push. You will probably be overrun, especially if you're a US battleship. So you need to be careful. And we're talking early battleships, obviously. We're not talking about the Isla. We're talking about the Colorado. Yep, the Colorado is one of those ships that will be left behind if he spawns on the weak side. So you need to be careful not to show too much of your side, but you shouldn't be afraid because the enemy will inherently be a little bit too aggressive sometimes and show perfect broadsides. And you need to be able to hit those citadels and punish the broadside. A lot of times a battleship will basically be defending the base. They'll go to the base, they'll sit in the capture base. We all have seen this and they'll just wait for something to come to them. That's not very useful, but you don't want to get too close to the enemy base because the enemy base is actually pretty close by a straight shot on this map. You need to be careful not to run into the worst case scenario, torpedoes, battleships, and cruisers all firing on you as you move forward. You want to be really, really, really sure that what you're going into is safe enough that you won't get blown up. I like to avoid the islands at sea. It's very congested, very congested. So just be careful. If you go into sea, you need to have backup. You need to have your aircraft. You need to be aware of your surroundings or you're gonna get ambushed and die. And it's really easy to run into an island as a battleship at sea. Destroyers are really awesome in standard. They basically get to protect flanks and they can clog the entire flank just by themselves. They have their torpedoes. They have their ship themselves that can just slow the enemy team down. You could take out the enemy's advancing destroyers and really take away that protection that the fleet needs to push. And I just love playing destroyers on this map. There's so many islands you can ambush from, but also be ambushed. You need to be careful. Destroyers are basically the only class in the game on standard that will be completely fine going through A and the C areas. They're those island choke points that are just so dangerous for battleships and cruisers. So you could be flanked and flanked really hard, so just be careful. But understand, as a destroyer, you command so much of hotspot. 
it's just so empowering and once you've broken through a flank you can transition to another flank and you can dominate it as well it's really really easy to just be such an annoying pest to the enemy team and i love it there's absolutely nothing better than playing a destroyer and being that pest for me it's it's the best part of this game so hotspot i love the map it's so fun to play it's much better than the original version, but admittedly, I like the original version. There were a lot of moments fighting around C, and what is today A, but it wasn't A back then, those are great memories. And one thing that's really great about the map, those memories take place all over it. There are so many different unique scenarios that come up, and they just make me love it even more, and this map is just great. Now, in this game, we got so close to winning. Look how close we are to winning. We only need one kill. We get this Udaloy dead, the game is ours, and I'm trying my best. We're overextended, of course, but we had to. I was trying to get as close to the islands as I could to prevent the enemy from firing on me, and it just doesn't work out. He pops a smoke, he hides from me, he gets the kill on me instead. The only way we're gonna win that game is to get that kill, and we didn't make it happen. We earned Confederate three kills, six Citadels, 400,000 credits, 1,609 base XP, and that enemy Udaloy is the player that carried the match. Good job, Udaloy. I would have loved to kill you, though. And this is just one of those games where you try to overcome the team deficit, and it just doesn't work out. We did around 85,000 points of damage, which is okay. We could have done better, and the game itself was very close. We tried to get the win. We just couldn't. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you also enjoyed the map tactic discussion. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you next time.